video, I am going to show you the very easy step-by-step -step process that I follow to work with my video editor so we can create a final nice video for my video podcast. As you know, I don't edit my videos myself. I outsource that to a video editor. So that is the process that I'm going to be walking you through today. Now, we are just going to go through the high-level four-step process first, and then I'm going to walk you through the details behind it. So the very first step is for me to gather and submit all the files to my video editor. That is my responsibility, that is why I put here me in parentheses. And as you will see here, I'm going to show you whose responsibility is each of these steps. Step number two is to create a first draft. That is my video editor's responsibility. So I put VE, video editor. Again, my responsibility to gather the files and submit everything to him. And then once he has that, it is his responsibility to create the first draft. Step number three is for me to review and send all the edits back to my video editor so he can finalize the video. And step number four is to go back and forth a little bit probably and to approve that final version of the video. So as you can see, this is a very easy four-step process. Now I'm going to go into all the details within each of these steps. And for that, I created a checklist for you. That way you're not wondering what you need to do within each of these steps. So let's jump right in. All right. So for step number one, I mentioned that the very first step and most important probably is really to gather and submit all the files to my video editor. That is really my responsibility to make sure that I enable him with everything that he needs to do the best job that he can. If I don't provide him the files that he needs, if he's wondering what he needs in order to create the video, then he's not going to be able to create the video that I want. So it is extremely important that you gather everything that you need into one email and send that to your video editor so that person can really do the best job that they can. So here are a few examples of the things that I include within that first email. The very first thing is the raw video and audio files. So what does that mean? Basically, when I record my video podcast, I, as you know, if you've seen my prior videos, I use multiple cameras. So that means I have multiple raw video files, video and audio files. So I make sure that I upload all those files onto my G drive and I put them into one single folder. So that way, when he's going to edit this video, he knows exactly what folder he needs to go to. Okay. So that is the first thing. The second thing is um, name, title, and description. Now, this may vary depending on the type of podcast that you host. If you have a podcast like mine where I conduct interviews, then the information that I provide here to my video editor is the name of the person that I interview, the title or the name of the company in a description. And that description is something that I work with the person that I interview to make sure that it's concise and really descriptive of what this person does. Now, if you do a video podcast that is just um, you, is not interviews, then probably this information is repetitive from for all of your video podcasts. But for me, it changes every single time because of the fact that I interview different people for every different episode. Now, the next thing is B-roll photos or videos. Now, what is B-roll? B-roll is anything that will complement your main video. So my main video is the recording of the actual podcast or video podcast. What B-roll would be in this case, let's say that I interview an entrepreneur that um, created a business to do dog training. So perhaps I will do some research on uh, Shutterstock and find some photos of dog training or dogs or trainers or, or even the person that I'm interviewing shares with me some of those personal photos that I, they're giving me permission to put onto my video. So those are all called B-roll. And again, they can be in the form of a photo or a video. So then you just need to make sure that you upload them onto 
a folder so you can share those with your video editor. So these are the different type of um, information that I put into one single email to send it to him so I can again enable him to do the best job that he can. All right. Step number two is then he takes all that information and he creates the very first draft of the video, okay? And that, it all depends. I mean, you need to work um, and see how your workflow would be. Uh, for me, working with my video editor, I already know that if I upload it, um, you know, on a Monday, he probably has a first draft already by Thursday or Friday. All right, the next step here is actually to um, review and send edits. That again is my responsibility. So now I take the file that he created, which we call the first draft, and I go through it in detail to review it and I can send him my comments. Now, why do we do this? We do this because there is always inevitably things that you're going to find that you want to polish or that you want to make better, or that we're missing. So basically what you're doing, you have each other's backs, and you just have an extra pair of eyes to review the video to make sure that everything is impeccable in the way that you want it to look and be. So here are the things that I go through that I put onto then my video editing uh, email that I send back to him before we finalize the actual video. So the very first thing is an intro or a hook. Now, for this, I just put it at the very top of my email. However, I wait until I have watched the entire video first before I decide what do I want that intro to be. And I'll tell you why. This is, again, as I said, the call, the hook. And the reason why you want to watch the entire video is because you want to capture that, you know, less than one minute clip where the interview or the podcast captures the most important essence of your podcast. So you can put it at the very front and people can see from the beginning what this podcast is all about. So when they see those very few seconds, they get hooked and they're like, oh yes, absolutely. This is something that I want to learn more about. I want to watch the entire video. So it's, it's almost like a teaser, okay? So you put that at the very beginning. Like I said, let me just go through this one more time. I put a placeholder on my email to him at the very top for the intro or hook. I, I watch the entire video and then I decide what is the most powerful piece of information within the entire video and I put it in there. And it's usually less than a minute, less than 69 seconds there. All right. The second piece that I put on that email with the feedback and in the edits that I want him to make is, is just general feedback. So what, what kind of general feedback do I usually provide? Now, I tell him about sections that I would like to remove or add. So after I go through the entire video, if I see sections where you know, the conversation was not as clear or, you know, inevitably we make mistakes and I want to remove those, then I tell them specifically, I want you to remove from minute X to minute Y, okay? Which brings me to a amazing tip here that I need to provide to you, which is a hack and you need to make sure that you put this on your emails. Make sure you timestamp each of the sections that you're providing feedback to your video editor so he or she knows exactly what section they need to edit and what they need to do with that. All right, so moving along, another piece of feedback that I could potentially provide is about audio or volume. So when I review the entire video, I pay attention. Was it all clear? Could we hear it okay? Did we have any background noise? Um, because there is apps that is specifically help um, reduce any background noise if you did end up having any in things like that. So you want to make sure that your audio is good. The next one is lighting. Same thing with audio. It's like you want to make sure that the lighting was okay. Remember, this is video. This is not just audio. Um, and, you know, if at the time that you were recording, the lighting was not optimal, then you can ask your video editor to make it lighter, brighter, 
or to use even specific apps to make it look better. All right, and the last thing is the B-roll, which we talked about before. So at this point in time, I specifically mentioned to my video editor with the timestamp. Okay, I would like to insert X photo or video from the B-roll onto that section. So, and I'm going to show you again exactly how that looks like within my email. Um, and then the last thing is quotes, which I typically name word, words of wisdom, hacks, or key takeaways. So as I go through the video, I specifically look for those very important nuggets during the interview that the person that I'm interviewing just came up with naturally during our conversation. And then those are good to break out patterns. So if the video is just looking at the two of you during the, the interview or just you, um, inserting these quotes just to break out patterns, help people to stay engaged. So as you can see, those are all the pieces of information that I send within my email to my video editor to make sure that he makes the edits that I want. And then I send that off to him on an email, one single email, try to make sure that you gather everything and put it always into either one single folder or one single email. That way there is no questions asked as to where this information is. And then we probably go back and forth maybe once, maybe twice. If you're working with a new video editor, you know, it may take you a little bit longer uh, until you get used to each other and find your rhythm as to how to um, edit and finalize your videos. But then we really just, uh, we go into that process and then approve it. So that is pretty much the checklist that I go through every single time that I review and edit my video podcast with my video editor. Now I'm going to show you the actual um, process of how I do it so you can see the actual behind the scenes of, of me doing it. Let's go now to, to show you the real behind the scenes as to how I um, interact with my video editor when we go and edit our files. So um, here I have my G drive. And again, you can create whatever structure that works for you. I don't want to dictate how you structure your folders. This is just what works for me. So basically I, create these, I created these folders and this is how I share the files with him. I, I created one that is called Podcast Raw Videos. And that is where I basically upload all the interviews for him and whenever I want to share one of those, I just right click, hit get shareable link, and that is what I share with him. Uh, so he's got all the files within that folder for that one interview, okay? So let's go into 2020 here, and we have already a file that we're ready to edit because he already created a first draft. So let's go on to Sophia's video here, and actually I already have it open. Um, now, here on the left, what you can see is I already have an email that has a framework or a structure um, that I follow for every single video editing that I do, that I send to him. So, as I mentioned before, the, the very first part that you need to send is the intro or the hook. However, you would not get to um, tell your video editor which part it is that you want to add until you have watched the entire video. Because again, you want to pick up the most important, the most relevant, the hottest part of the interview to make it um, to make it to the front, to put it on the front as the hook. Um, and then I put here start and end because you want to enter here the timestamp that is critical, that is important, that is the only way that your video editor is going to know which section within the video you want to insert there. And this is what the types timestamps look like. Now, I mentioned to you that I add feedback in quotes, and that feedback could be if I didn't like the lighting or the audio, or if I am going to add quotes, um, you know, those quotes can be hacks, key takeaways, or words of wisdom, whatever you want to call it. Um, but those I enter in there. So let's let's get to it. 
So I already started this video. So if we hit play. A little bit about your in love for entrepreneurship. So I actually, when I purchased the course, I didn't really have an inclination to do an online business. I had only, I had a hunch that I really wanted to help people. And I've always, I've, I thought that helping people with my art would be the thing, but I didn't feel like it had a tangible impact. Mm -hmm. And the notion of creating an online product, right. helping people around the world, uh, was so much more inspiring to me. So that All right. So I found something that it was really nice that she said here. So um, she said, helping people around the world was so much more inspiring to me. So why do I put that as words of wisdom? Basically, um, it's, it's just inspiring. I mean, she's talking about inspiration and how she found inspiration, but it's also inspiring to others when they see it. Wow, yeah, I mean, um, my job as a digital CEO or an entrepreneur is not just to teach people my art, but it's also to find, um, to help others. It's, it's really what motivates me. So I'm putting that as a quote, and basically what I'm going to look at is for the timestamp, that is going to be the end of when she exactly said that, and then I'm going to put that up front. So 131, those are the words of wisdom, and you know, we can go for hacks and takeaways later. Together for me, like in it, I saw the potential for creativity. I saw the potential for overcoming myself, you know, and my own limitations. All right, so right there, I caught another great nugget where she talks about, I saw the potential for creativity overcoming myself and my fears. So that is going to become another word of wisdom. So basically, you just Keep doing this um, for every section where you find something that is relevant for your audience that is going to be inspiring that, you know, it was like an aha moment. So you just keep going in, in doing the same thing for the entire video. You are looking for those nuggets, words of wisdom, hacks, key takeaways, but also at the same time, keep an eye on lighting, audio, and, and so on so you can just put all that onto your feedback and quotes here in this video you'll notice that there is a lot of movement actually this was totally improvised we recorded this at an event that we were at and i had not planned on bringing any of my equipment with me so i was literally holding my phone on my hand as we were doing this interview uh, but it's better done than not doing it at all so that that was my Key takeaway there, I, I much rather taking the opportunity that I was there with her to conduct the interview than not doing it at all. Now a program that you're thinking about um, launching as a digital course. Yeah, so basically it, it came to me later words that actually my hunch was completely correct that me going through this process of learning BMX prior to starting a big business was actually hugely useful because I remember when I started on the endeavor of, okay, I'm going to learn BMX, I was crippled by fear and not by fear of being hurt or falling, but by fear. Of wow. That, that right there is super powerful. So, um, I haven't gone through the entire video yet. And because of how powerful this is, I'm going to actually put it here as my intro um, because I do feel that the message there is powerful. Um, however, even though if I'm going to put it here temporarily, um, I'm going to obviously finish watching the entire video in case that there is something better than that. I start at 3.52. And then I type exactly the words that um, this person or the person that I'm interviewing said. That way, my video editor is not only looking for the timestamp there, but he's also looking for, okay, where is the exact time where I need to begin and I need to end? So that way there is no questions asked. 
So she said... My hunch was completely correct that me going through this process of learning BMX prior to starting a big business was actually hugely useful because I remember when I started on the endeavor. Okay. I remember when I started on the endeavor. Okay. So he knows this the beginning. And I don't need to necessarily type the entire minute. 4.57 would be the end. Actually, that is a little bit longer than a minute. Um, however, it was so good. Um, so, and at the beginning, it's just the beginning. So, he would know that the start of this intro is going to start at minute 352 where she says i remember when i started on the endeavor and that he knows he's going to know that he needs to end that intro or hook at minute 457 where she ends up saying the beginning is just the beginning so as you can see i mean this is as clear as water i'm trying to make it as simple for him as possible so there is no questions asked um, well, obviously, if he has questions or she does, you obviously should help and answer those questions. But your job is to make it clear, simple for your video editor so they can do the best that they can. So that, I think, is going to be my intro for this video. As you can see here, I put some quotes that I want him to insert. Um, I haven't looked for any hacks or key takeaways yet. I'm going to continue, but that is the essence of um, the process that I follow. I just go through the entire video, I add any feedback, and let me actually show you an actual email, what it looks like once I finish editing. I mean, not editing, but reviewing the first draft. This is an example of a video, um, of an email that I sent to him. So you can see, hi, how are you doing? Below, please find my feedback. Here's the intro. I have the start time, what it says, and the end time. Okay, and then the feedback. I say on my intro, um, it, can we go around one six? I feel like I was going on and on and on and on and on, saying that. So I just want him to to skip that, to cut that section, and then he obviously sends me. The final version, which is what I upload to YouTube, iTunes, and so on. So hopefully, I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to DM me or contact me. Um, but yes, this is the, the process that I follow to work with him on the edits for my video podcast.